Okay, I had a hunk of brass here that was about the right size, so I took and clamped that in and uh, emeryed it down to fit. Just all I needed to do was just emery a thaw or so off of it, and it slides on there nice. Now I'm going to drill and tap for a quarter inch bolt here, but I'm going to put a I'm going to put a stud in there. And lock tight it in place and then I'll put a clamp across here with a nut and in the end of the stud I'm gonna have a center although I don't know if I really need a center on it I might just forego that and just drill and tap a quarter inch hole in there <coughs> put it I was gonna put up quarter inch clamp across. Okay. Here. I'm just going to take and tip a clamp upside down and put it across there like that. I might just do that. I might just take and drill and tap it for a quarter inch and try it that way. First. And if I have any Problems, then I will put a center in the end. So I need a center drill and a number seven drill. And number seven, center drill, and then a quarter twenty tap, of course. Put the center drill in first, dummy. <laughs> Seven drill. And like that. The only thing is, this is hard brass though, so it should drill pretty good. It's not soft brass. Kind of expensive material to use for a mandrel, but you gotta remember it's not going to be <laughs> permanently used as a mandrel. So, it's what I had at hand. So, <clears throat> I need a quarter inch tap, quarter twenty. Why is it every time you look for a quarter twenty, you find a quarter twenty eights? And if you were looking for a quarter twenty-eight, the only thing you could find would be a quarter twenty. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I want a quarter twenty plug. Here we go. Quarter twenty plug tab. Then my little tap handle. Get my tap guide out. Put some Molly D on. We should be ready to tap. Lock that. Come on. Ooh. I just love how brass taps crumbly.
and it fights you all the way to in and out. <laughs> That should almost be good enough. Just need it deep enough to get a quarter inch cap screw. A pretty good bite. Well, one and a half times the diameter is the max <coughs> strength anyway. On a cap screw. At 75% thread. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, I can need to find a washer. Washer for this. Slide this back on. Now, we're about ready to give it a whirl here. Not exactly sure what RPM I want to use. And I need to set up a, a part-off blade. It's supposed to be a, oh, this is an eighth inch part-off that I'm going to use. So, I think I got to switch that too. I'll have to switch part off blades because that's not an eighth incher there. Either that or make a grooving tool. I could just make another grooving tool too. Well, I got a chip down in the hole here. Trying to find something to pick it out of there. There we go. All right. And that's the small one wrench. <clears throat> See if I got an eighth inch around the shelf. I think I do. If not, then I will be grinding up a blade. Or taking two cuts. Could do that too, and that might be just what I'm gonna have to do. Nope, I don't. I do not have an eighth incher. This one here is a 92. Poop. <laughs> I could have swore I had one, but. So, that's okay. I'll just um, move. I'll fudge it, fudge it over. But I gotta make sure I get can go far enough. Ain't gonna be able to go far enough there because from this diameter down I have to go from that diameter down two inch. So that's seven hundred. I have to go. I have to go one hundred and fifty deeper into that. So. Set it about there somewhere. 
Don't like to don't like to set it any longer than you absolutely have to. I'm gonna just double check to make sure that's what I, that I'm on the right wavelength here. That's that's two inches, and it has to go to 700, so that's 300. So I gotta go in 150 on the side, so 300 thou from when that cleans up. So I'm gonna touch. Back it out. That's me. Stay in there like that. All right. Now I'm not exactly sure what RPM I should be using for this one, so I am going to start at 600, which is C3, and we'll see what it sounds like. If Just touch it there. I got to go in 300 thou from there. I'm going to turn my power feed off and I'm going to kick it down because I could hear that it's going to start chattering. So we're at 600. I'm going to go to 360. B. Still not out far enough. You can see I, you know, I hit the edge there. Uh, I had about 40,000 to go yet. Ah, poop. So, uh, move that out a little bit. Loosen these up. Slide it out about 100,000. That's a little more than 100 right there somewhere. I'm going to come over to the other side to touch that diameter because that diameter is, well I can touch it right here too. Never mind. I'm not thinking. I'll just move over and touch and then I have to go in 300 from there. You know what? I didn't check my center height either which <laughs> is probably not right. Dummy. Getting in too big a hurry. It's a little bit high. A little bit high, so I'm gonna back up and drop it just a little bit. That could be why it was chattering too. That's pretty close right there. Alright, let's go back over here and touch. Set my zero. Okay, set my zero. And then come back over here and touch. And then going to 300. There's 200, 60, 80, 300. And I need to move over 20 some thou. 20. I want to make that 125. It's 93. So 20 would give me. Uh, I need to go. I need to go 25. to 
go seven thou more, so thirty-two. Correct? Yeah, thirty-two. Hopefully my blade will stay straight. So there was zero right there. And then the next slot over would be uh, 125 over. So it'd be, it'd be 250 over each time. So it'd be 100, 250. Just going to take a light cut and see. I just want to see where I'm at here to make sure. That should be about 125 thick. And then if I take the 30 off of it. Yep. So move over and then back 30 again. So here we go. I got a long ways to go in. <laughs> I should have put a line along here. I will on this cut. So I can see where I'm at. I'm at the bolt holes. Interrupted cut right now. That get too wild on the bolt holes here. I'm not using my power feed, I'm hand feeding it. Call me chicken. Alright, I'm gonna stop right there. I wanna see where I wanna see where I finish out at, and then I'm gonna draw a line on here. That way I can see when the two lines mark line up that I know where I'm at. So that's where it's gotta be. I gotta get it grease pencil and make a line right there call them my cheating lines really I'm kinda of cheating I'm gonna go right here and I'm just gonna put a line down that way I know that that's where I gotta end up at. And we'll get back over here to the 150 mark. Sound of that uh, going across those bolt holes. Got 
Okay, I don't know where the other camera is shut off at. I so I set you up on the little camera on on the tool post here. I kicked the RPM up to 600. We're going to give that a try, and we're going to see if it chatters or if I can get away with it. Here we go. This is with slotting with a 93 foul part off blade. of going through those holes. I'm going to have to slow down. Let's see if I can tighten that up. Here's a smoking now. Ugh. Yeah, I'm going to have to kick back to the to the 360. I kind of wish I had a like a 400. Just getting too aggressive on it. Funny on the manual. I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this at all. Next time I'm not drilling those holes through if I do this again. You know, I've done it on smaller cylinders, but I didn't do it, have never done it on a bigger cylinder like this. And it's obvious that you don't want to do that. Pretty obvious. I can't get that clamp tight enough to... Kick it down even more. Let me take and just touch up my um, tool a little bit. Maybe it's just a little dull. I never. I should have probably did that right away before I started, but I didn't. Doesn't look that bad, but I'll just give it a little touch. Just gave it a little touch on the end, it, but I don't think that's what's causing it. Though it's the chips when they get into the into that hole, into one of those holes inside. It wasn't spinning in my three jump. No, it's not. I didn't think. It was. Let me lower this down a little bit. That might help a little bit to lower it below center. First one went so well. It didn't sound good when it was going on through the hole. Out of all, after 140. Now I got about 100 out of all. 
eighty five all, fifty five all, forty, twenty. We're there. All right, thirty two thou over. <laughs> that one was a bugger. Now you know why I like doing them on a mandrel. If that would have been just in a three draw, I would have probably thrown the part out, ruined the part. Here we really didn't do a whole lot of damage to the part. It might have stuffed up the faces a little bit, but other than that, it didn't really hurt the part any. I'm taking that 32 back cut to get the slot the right width. I might cut some of this out, this grooving out, just give you uh, some of it and not all of it. About 200,000 to go. back in. I don't like doing a back cut like that with a grooving tool or with a part off blade. It just flexes too much. Alright, so back over to here and then we've got to go 250. 1, 2, 50. Next slot. Give it a shot of course every now and then.
drop it into the hole. And wedge it in there. And I suppose if you get too aggressive, like I did, the chips are too a little thicker. So I lock it right up. disasters back up 32 20 32 I think I'm going to turn my power feed in on for this well no I'm not I'm not going to change it I'm just going to do it by hand so I've been stopping and backing up on this side cut here what I should have did was Relieve the center of that part off blade. Hmm, that's not too bad though. Other than one little disaster. Or mishap or whatever you want to call it. I have, what, nine pins on it? Yeah, I got nine of them. So I got three, so I got six more to go. For a third done. So like I say, I might cut away and then come back on the last couple. After I get this one done, I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away and then I'll start back up, start filming again on the very last one. If I make it that far. And then I might, like I say, I might make a uh, full radius tool and uh, for a 125 like that and uh, radius the top of these fins instead of leaving them square. I don't know yet. I'll have to wait and see after I clean, turn the OD in, clean it up a little bit and we'll see what it looks like. This, this motor has been a long time coming because uh, this was one of the first uh, this one of the first mo model or first motors that I modeled up and uh, and what it what it was was I. Uh, modeled it up and designed it and uh, and it was one of my first practice projects when I uh, was moved into the tool design and I was trying to learn uh, NX Unigraphics, well, actually at that time it was Unigraphics uh, version 8, 17 or 18, 16, I don't know. Anyway, it's a long, long time ago so I was thinking it was like seven or eight years ago. It's more like uh, 12 or 13 years that I've had this one on uh, parts of it in in uh, modeled up and and drawn up. So anyway, this motor's been in a long time in the making and it's finally getting made. So um, anyway, I'm going to cut away here and continue on. And if I get to the last one today, I'll start the camera back up. If I get to it tomorrow, I'll start the camera up tomorrow. So 
Until then, catch you later. Okay, I just finished up this uh, last back cut on this one. So I got to move over the 250. 100, 250. It should be, it should be uh, right on the edge of that. And it is. So we're going to back cut up against the surface up against this back side here and we're going to cut that last last groove in there <coughs> take a light cut on that to clean that up. Uh, put a bit in here to turn that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'll use this. This one here. Move the camera. I'll back you up here a little bit anyway. Alright, so I know it's running out a little bit, so I'm going to clean this up and then I want to chamfer each one of these. I might take some uh, 1200 thou uh, grit after too, paper, because if I do polish those, but I'll do that after I get the chamfers on too, I'm going to put chamfers on all of them. quite clean up. I'm going to take another 10 and I'm going to feed back out. And I'll find a chamfer tool here. Chamfers. I'm not sure what the angle is on it, but, but it'll work for what I want. Take this tool out. Get this tool in there. Just kind of want to break the edges of all of the. Yeah. 
I'm gonna check this. I think it's way below. No, it's not. It's pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> Just gonna eyeball little campers on them. I could have, uh, I suppose, set my dials and stuff and made them all exactly the same, but this will work. This will be just fine. carriage out of the way. I think I'll vacuum up some of this stuff here. paper here and I'm just gonna kind of emery that down. It's not, it's not really emery paper, it's uh, it's uh, wet dry paper. I find it really good for polish and stuff. in uh, Never Dull Evil One polishing cotton or whatever you want to call it. And we'll see what looks like out there. And we'll just take, it's like a cotton with some grit or polishing compound in it. And I think I'm going to kick up the RPM now. I'm going to kick it to 
Got the short one here. I don't know if I can get loose with that. Oh, yeah. It didn't hurt the diameter any. You're spinning and spun right here against that, against this surface here. Looks all right though. Oh, here it's scarred it up a little bit. I can clean that up though. Matter of fact, I can probably clean it up with that paper even. It's not very deep. You won't see it anyway because that is actually going to be the ceiling surface. So, it don't look too bad. All right, well, I think that's going to get for today. Um, where's my little... Pad, here it is. Here. But if, if I take this paper and lay it on the surface plate and then take that scarred surface and lay it on there and give her a few strokes here. I'll take the high spots off of it anyway. It'll still seal. All the way around, so ain't gonna hurt nothing. There'll be a gasket material in there anyway. I could take it, set it back up, and and polish it. But one part down, I'd say that part is pretty much done to uh, to the drawing. Other than a little bit of deburring and a little bit of cleaning up, I'm not sure what I'm going to work on next. Probably the hot pan, the hot cap, not stainless. <clears throat> I'll work on that. Well, I haven't decided if I'm going to make it out of stainless. I think that's what I'm going to make it out of, though, the stainless, because I could make it. Was going to make it out of some other material. I got some aluminum nickel bronze that I could use for that. I'm going to make it out of stainless. I think stainless will work for that pretty good. So, cool. One, one part down. So, anyway, until next time, uh, we'll round up some stainless for uh, making that hot cap. And if that's what I decide to work on next, and. Uh, We'll catch you then. So thanks for watching. Catch you later.